I think you need to do your hair, mate, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, like what wig? <laughs> I think if you were to come on with a wig, I don't think anyone would notice, John. No, they probably wouldn't. They wouldn't. <laughs> right, it gives me great pleasure to have the wonderful Adam Carter and John Wills here for the Fan Roundtable this week. Episode 87. Oh. A decent week for the use. A couple of points gained in matches that probably we could have won. So a little bit frustrating. But um, we're also going to talk um, Radio Carter's return. So first of all, chaps, shall we talk about Bogner? Well, sadly, I wasn't there. So I was following on Twitter. But okay. um, it certainly sounded like it was a, a, a well-fought point. Mm. Well, as I was the only one there... Uh, a wonderful train journey with the loyal Fat Hastings fans. Uh, it was a slightly early beginning one, so I was and slightly... And you, wor- you won't uh, remember any of it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a wonderful journey up, up to the game, frequenting a few places. Uh, dog, the Dog and Duck was worth a mention in Bogner, a very nice place, which uh, allowed us to have a little bit of a sing-song in there, which was uh, which went down well with the, uh, the other customers. Um, a game that I have to say... Uh, stodgy game, uh, not many chances. Uh, you know, it just was destined for a draw, really. Uh, both teams probably a little bit disappointed that they didn't get the win, but, but both teams didn't really deserve to win it either. So um, other than that, it was uh, nice to see the new lad, Jamal Hector Hingram, uh, get get a, a little bit of a run out. It's, t- it's took a, nearly, a, I think, nearly a month to get uh, international clearance because he was uh, playing for St. Johnston. Was it St. St. Johnston? Johnson, yeah. yeah, St. Johnston um, a while ago. So, um, And he looked lively. He did look lively. It looks like um, he needs to get his shooting boots on, but um, that will come with time. He's, he, he gets himself in the right places. Um, my highlight of the, the trip was probably watching Matt and Kev having a, a set two on the train. Uh, it was wonderful entertainment. Uh, <laughs> they they kissed and made up at the end, and they, want, they were trying to get out for beers together. It almost got a little bit broke back mountain. Um, uh, and uh, I, I posted something up on on Facebook the the picture of Kev uh, giving Matt the evils. It was a, a wonderful picture. Um, but yeah, much love to Kev and Matt for that one. Um, other than that, chaps, you got anything to say about Bogner? Um, no, I was listening to their their commentary, and um, <clears throat> they they gave their keeper, I think, the man of the match. So apparently, he made a three top class saves does that fit in with what you saw after your drunken train <laughs> ride uh, i mean yeah no he, he, he was all right we did have a few chances and so did they and um it was just one of those games john you know it's you know it was it was decent chances but not really clear cut ones if you get what i mean no it's, and um defensively it sounds like we had had a bit of work but were solid yeah yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the usual sort of... Finn, obviously, Finn O'Mara being back. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Craig Stone's going to be out for a while. But Finn O'Mara's fitted in really well. I think I think we both agree. But, and then we're obviously going to move on to uh, Canvey, where we had a good game as well. Um, uh, it was fantastic to see Finn come in and just um, and look so settled, um, which was nice. And obviously, Brefo, I don't see anyone getting that shirt off him this season. So... Um, uh, he's an absolute shoe in in the team. And he, yeah, defensively, obviously, and obviously you've got uh, uh, Kane Penn, who's just been a, re- a revelation. Um, I think we all agree with that one, don't we? I mean, he's, he's yeah. So much of our stuff comes through him on that side, and um, yeah, it was you know it was. I mean, uh, you know, we're missing missing Sammy Hasler a little bit, but um, Jack Dixon stepped up a bit. You know, he's 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 um, he's, well, he's having to do a lot more now, and um, you know, showing. Not only his uh, solid defensive game, but like he can ping in a few passes because it used to be just Sam Hasler was doing that, wasn't it? So um, Jack Dixon going for his range a bit, but um, yeah, no, that, again, that's probably all that I remember. John, you're um, asking a lot there. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, I, I did, I did hear. Wasn't there one of the barmaids was a bit grumpy, and was it Matty that said to her, "I take it this isn't a happy hour then." <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Ben. I think that oh, could have been Ben. It, have been, it, yeah. it was one that, that was that was brilliant. I have to say, <laughs> even the um, Bogner fans laughed at that one. Um, it, that was quite funny. It, it could, well, it could have been. Was it Matt or Ben? I don't know. 
I can't know. My, my, I'm a bit sketchy on that one. Yeah. If Matt or Ben's uh, listening, sounds, they can tell us. Sounds like a, you know, a hard-earned point there, travelling away to Bogner. It's, um, it's not a bad result, is it? I don't think. Although they, they've not performed maybe as they would have expected this season so far. It, it's still a pretty decent point. Mm. That. And we took a fair few as well. We took a fair few, which was which was good to good to see lots of faces there. So uh, so that's Bogner. So mm-hmm. we move on now to Canvey. So let us set this up. So in in between Bogner and Canvey, obviously uh, 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 Mr. Carter here, who's um, been sitting here nice and quietly, made an announcement. Unfortunately, he was going to have to pack pack the radio in. And well, was that they say that uh, twenty four hours is a long time in politics. Tell us what happened, Adam, and obviously a lot of the messages you got and support to keep the radio going. Please tell us. Yeah, so basically um, the long and story short leading up to it is that um, I've left my current job. So um, with that, obviously, it means I'm now down money. So I couldn't afford to keep the radio going. It was a lot of travel away games, like a lot of petrol money, diesel money. Um, there's also obviously um, server side of things, licensing side of things. There's a lot of additional fees that there are that was just going to be outside of what I could afford. Yeah, I'd looked into like getting a couple of sponsors for the radio, but like to help cover costs, but it just didn't feel like it was working. So mm. um, I posted up about it. Um, I had a couple of messages from people saying, you know, sort of like, how much is it? What do we need to do? Keep it going. And it it sort of all of a sudden come to a point where I was getting, I I saw at one point I had 30 messages open on Facebook and Twitter of people saying, how do we keep the radio going? So obviously it's, it's something that people want. It's something that people need. And then um, Billy Wood then messages me and says, you know, what's happened, what's going on and so on and so forth. And um, along with Pat McCrossan, um, and I sort of explained to them both, and Pat was like, leave it with me for a few minutes. I want to go off and have a chat. Uh, apparently went off and um, he had a phone call with some of the directors um, to have a sort of discussion about it and that. And um, Hastings United have agreed that it's such an invaluable service that like they they just feel that it's the way that Hastings needs to go going forward. Um like being able to give to the fans that can't make the games, especially away games or um, like with train strikes and things like that, you know, sort of like they can't get to the games and stuff, Mm. which is totally understandable. Um, So Hastings United have stepped up and are funding it um, till the end of the season, which then gives me time to sort of find some sponsors. Um, Sponsors are coming, um, which is good. Um, there's a there's a few companies that sponsor Hastings United who also want to get in on the radio and then have adverts on the radio. So they will be able to sort of sponsor and then help with the costs sort of going forward. So but big kudos to to Pat McCrossan and to, to Billy Wood for for making it happen um, very quickly. It was it was literally within two hours of me posting the announcement. Mm. There was a plan in place and. Um, a receipt of something that I'd paid for and instantly the club that well I needed to pay for and instantly the club like made sure I had the money that day to pay it and it it was instant so we was good to go and um one of the directors um Darren Burney he was listening in last night for for the radio for Canby Island and um like he was sort of saying on there just yeah like because he couldn't make the game just to be able to sit there and have it on listening to it while he's working was just a a godsend to him and then let alone all the other people that listen in as well so mm. it is clearly a, a valuable asset to the you know a valuable service to the people and to everyone and the club know that and want to make sure that it carries on going so they have Good stuff well i just there's some questions i've got some serious questions to ask you you've obviously got you're saying billy pat mccrossan and obviously darren burney but, but i'm a little bit worried pat mccrossan if there's do you believe that he might have perhaps some creative control? Is he going to force you to play some of his choice um, song picks when you're on the radio? I mean, or... well, f- Pat McCrossan actually co-commentated with me last night. He was in with me for the whole game as well. Ah. And at halftime, he wanted Iron Maiden playing, mm. as does Pat. Mm. And he wanted to play Iron Maiden just to uh, get at Malk Stone. Mm. 
Of course, Malkstone <laughs> doesn't. Uh, Malkstone prefers some of the old, other older rock, not so much the heavier yeah. metal rock like Iron Maiden. Mm. But no, I didn't. I didn't play any Iron Maiden. I, I will play Iron Maiden for him, but I, I will play it when I feel he's deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, no, he, he was great last night, Pat was. He was really good. He helped a bit of filler and just it was it was really good. And I'm, I really want to get a like co-commentator every week, a different person or if somebody wants to come in on a regular basis. But I think it will be so great to have somebody else in the office with me to be talking and and doing the commentary and such like um i mean canby island yesterday was a was a was a great game because it was oh it, it was a point that we deserved three points for but to actually commentate on it about how like the possession that hastings had and the, mm. the attacking and and everything like that it was it was so great so mm. um yeah and having pat there was just an even better like did pat, he have a massive like, mullet on was he pat was he reacting Pat Sharp? Was he like, woo, woo? I mean, yeah. what, what? not not so much Pat Sharp, more Chris Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, it was good. It was good. And, um, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable, Jeff. It really was. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, you mentioned you mentioned Canby Island. Uh, obviously, all of us were there. Um, John, do you want to give your thoughts on the game before we, me and uh, Adam kick in? Yeah, it seemed it seemed looked like the game, the whole game's going to hinge on that those that first half goal mouth scramble, where we we had a few people trying to put the ball into the net. They were blocking and saving. Ball was kicked out, and on the way out of the penalty box, it seemed to strike a hand of a defender. A big penalty shout, <clears throat> but obviously not given. And I think. There was a bit of preoccupation with that situation, and um, it ball fell kindly, didn't it, to um, one of their their lone striker, I think, and I think don't think he was far off the halfway line, but he lofted it over Louis, who'd who'd come up the pitch a bit. Mm. So it seemed, seemed like it was all going to hinge on that, you know, where we should be one nil up, and suddenly we're one nil down, you know, with 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 possibly a bit of injustice with the penalty appeal. Um, yeah. but, the Millards, the, the Millard but, twins, did say it was a penalty. I didn't see it. They said it was a Stonewall penalty. So, yeah, and and I think apart from that, you know, you you were kind of thinking as a as the final whistle approached that we looked just as good as them. We were creating more. We were holding the ball more, and you know, it was going to be one of those those devastating. Um, evenings, you know, just seemed seemed so unfair the whole way the ball the bounce of the ball we got. And but fortunately they kept pressing. You know, the longer the game went on, the more we looked like we've got to score. We've got to score mm. some, and and we did through through Finn after um, the corner. Yeah, it was a wonderful goal, wasn't it? I mean, I know we all went crazy, didn't we, uh, John, when we got that one in? Yes, yeah. Oh. What was it like to commentate it, Adam? Oh, it was just as crazy with me and Pat up in the box when when that actually went in. I mean, as as far as the game was going, we just felt like like both me and Pat said it just doesn't feel like, like it's our night. Everything was going against us. <laughs> like if a Canvey Island player had a slight touch on them, they were going down and getting a free kick for it. And yet, when our players were were sort of getting fouled the referee was just waving nothing and it just felt like nothing was going our way at all and yet for then that to get that sort of final corner sort of like sort of we're already deep into injury time and just like just to see Finn O'Mara sneak up at the back and just slot it into the bottom corner it, it was just marvellous marvellous scenes to see down there and then all of a sudden it all kicked off on the um in the dugouts between the, the two managers and Oh did it? Bobby. I didn't see that. Well, oh yeah, it did. Obviously. Um Gaz and Meany, they um they both were celebrating in in front of Canby Island and uh, <laughs> they um I don't think they appreciated they started kicking off, it all started kicking off and that and but you know, like I mean, a credit to Hastings, right to the very end, they they kept fighting and the only credit I can give Canvey Island was defensively they were they were solid they were mm. solid defensively they had like three attacks on goal for the whole game like and they scored one Louis pulled off an amazing save um, 
Like, yeah, it was Danny Parrish as well. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah that was the, who could have snuck back and scored against us. Exactly, was, you know, and um, but it was nice to see Danny Parrish back, and obviously he left us on good terms, and it's it's nice to have him back. So like see him well, back as long as he's not point. scoring. Yeah, as long as he's but, not yeah, scoring. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't score, so that's just it, you know. But um, yeah, like we was, I mean, like I would have said that Hastings had at least seventy percent of the possession yesterday, uh, but it just didn't feel like it was going our way until that last few minutes. And even when I, I, I even sort of like looked when they was putting the board up to say how much time at the end, and I sort of um, both me and Pat turned around and said, at the way it feels, Hastings could have an extra ninety minutes and just not be able to get that goal, but. As it turned out, it was five minutes to, to get that point that we so deserved, but yet we should have had three. But it was it was a great game to commentate on. And like, yeah, I think the only thing that really let the whole thing down was the red card right at the end for one of the Canby players for a silly handball. Like from both mine and Pat's positions, when we was looking at it, it's very silly because he, he kicked the ball, but the ref hadn't blown his whistle. So he then picked the ball back up to re-spot it and then was given a, a second yellow and a red, even though he thought the ball wasn't live in play yet. So just one of those oh, things. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a very frustrating game for me. I just, I felt that, because, you know, we, we've spoke about it quite a bit, that, that you know, we're not far off um, sort of top five team. And it's just those little, ah, uh, that just, just like, just we're, we're creating those chances. We are not putting them away. Or we're quite wasteful up front, you know. That they it's defensively we're excellent, very well organised team. Uh, obviously, we're, we're blessed with Meany and 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 Elphick and the gang, you know, in terms of all the work they do behind the scenes. It's just you know we just you know we we I don't know we, we had so many chances in that first. Was it half an hour, twenty minutes? Yeah, that, the, uh, really, first... until they scored that goal, and then it sort of like they they then seem to sort of like tighten up their defence a bit, but. It weren't mm. enough. Yeah, and then I, I have to say that second half, obviously, we, you know, you, I'm always behind the boys and, and trying to, you know, sing and everything. But I didn't think I thought it was done. I just, I just thought this isn't our day. Exactly, and especially then, when they that, cleared that ball off the line yeah, at the end with like, that header. It's just, oh, and that shot as well from Brefo. His his shot, great save from their keeper. But again, you're just feeling like it's not going to fall our way. But then, you know, rocking up in a Citroen Zara, who had to score it? Of course, Super it would have been Omar. Exactly. And uh, obviously, shout to Johnny Wills, who uh, caught it on video. He's caught quite a few things on video, a lot of them that he keeps to himself. But um, yeah. A lot uh, of you read about and claim honours for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. But uh, yeah, a magnificent goal, and uh, I know. I think it was. I think it was me and Matty. We run off down. Uh, just we run off to the in a direction. We didn't know what yeah. to do with ourselves. It was uh, oh, it was beautiful stuff. It really was. Well, the the other two players to me that stood out in yesterday's game were both Tom Chalmers and Kane Penn. Mm. Both of those those players, they you know Tom Chalmers got the man of the match. But he always gets the man of the match. There's, there's, uh, is there shenanigans going on there? I don't know because it's the other office that picks it. It's Andy Q, uh, isn't it? And his his sponsors are the ones who. Well, he's pick a man, Kenny. He's dodgy. Yeah. But you got to give TC his due. He was the one who fought hard to get that corner that we then went and scored from. Mm. He went running after that ball when it was rolling out and saved it. So yeah, maybe it maybe he earned it this time. But yes, yeah, yeah. so they came pen. Go on, sorry, John, please. I thought Jake Elliott had an excellent game bringing the ball forward, you know, as we were pushing for that equaliser. I, I think he put in a very good shift. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, I think it was key when we made those substitutions where we brought on Ben Pope, Chinadu, Sam Adams and went a bit more direct. And, you know, I think what's what's good about having Chinadu on is he is very direct and just uh, I think we caused them more problems. I, 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 do, I do feel that we were passing it sideways a lot with um uh earlier in the game and I think they just sat in a low block, didn't they? Um and just soaked it up mostly. Once once they got that goal, you know, at nil nil, we were all over them. It's just when we went one nil down, I, I felt it was a little bit too easy for them. Am I being harsh? I I think so, but I think at the same time, defensively they was just there was times when Louis Rogers was sitting on the halfway line as the only man because they had ten men behind like behind our front two 
and it was just there was no way through. And me and Pat at one point counted 34 passes leading up before the ball went out that Hastings had. Mm-hmm. And we just we we was dominating possession, but we just couldn't go forward because there was no options. Mm-hmm. Every time like they looked like there was a player on, there, there was like Canvey Island were there and to to do it, and it was just but. Canvey then got tired in about sort of about the 75th minute. They seemed to get tired a bit from the, the constant running back that mm. they started leaving a couple of players up front and that gave us more opportunity. So, mm. but, well, what's, yeah. What's your, yeah, what's, what about you? What do you reckon, John? Yeah, I, th- I, I mean, it's how football has changed. Um, when when you were young, <laughs> it's <Me>. bit about <laughs> that all sideways. I, I mean, the idea of that is keeping possession looking for gaps and but you you definitely need plenty of movement in front of you to to find those gaps and strategies to move forward it's not like um punting the ball up to leslie ferdinand was it oh super les (laughs) Well, that's what we, yeah, at QPR, we used to pass it sideways all the time. Ray Wilkins, nice little dinky passes. And then when we wanted to score a goal, lob it to les, it's sort of out. A defined midfield spaces then, didn't it? (laughs) But uh, yeah, Butch Wilkins, what a player! Oh no, love him. Not as love. good as Bowles, though. Yeah, well, I I never saw Stan Bowles play. I saw Ray Wilkins play a lot, though. Just to say, really, that they they're a form team. They've beaten some good teams. That that actually they're to, they. Had, I don't know whether they still are after the draw, but they were top of the um, current form table. Were they you really? know, okay. yeah. So there, it was you know to. Before, when you're thinking about him, where what position they are, you'd be more than happy with the point. But then you look on the balance of play and you think, no, we, we're actually good enough to beat them and take those three points. So, But that is some um, kind of promising to say, to think in that way, I think. You know, you know we're, we're on the fringe of the playoff places. We've got a game game in hand on most teams above us you know it's it's really really promising and the actual form of the side has been consistent a couple of low patches but when you think about it how many really bad games can you you um recall when you think about it, the three nil defeat was our only major defeat and that was because we had players sent off early on in the match so it's at the beginning of the season you think it's dreamland where we are you know what's been achieved to go up a division and it's it's such a faster and more physical division you know and we've we've held our own and we're and then some idea to you know move forward now yeah i mean we're just a couple of maybe a couple players away from being a an excellent side. I mean, we're good. You know, you, I suppose you can always look and think, well, you know, if you tinker with this or you tinker with that, then results could be different. But, um, you know, we're, we're there or thereabouts, aren't we? We're, there's, you know, and, and entertaining with it as well. That's the key. You know, it's not like we're just some stodgy long ball merchants or something. You know, it's we, we try and play our football with, you know, the obviously, as you were saying, Jake Elliott and, and Kane Penn, most games, are storming up the pitch, you know what I mean? They, they, we play, we do pro- try and play some football. But you know, you kind of the other from the other fantastic thing is how defensively sound we are, and are we still? I think we're we're second or something in goals conceded as well. We might even be first. I'm, I'm not sure, um, okay. but but it's that's that's amazing, really. When you when you go up a league, you, you know, uh, and it's credit to Gary Alfick. And um, John Meany, really, isn't it? The strategy mm. they... Yeah. I want to just quickly mention Gary Elfrick, actually, because we had a nice conversation with him after the game. And this is for anyone listening or watching this, is please, please, uh, fellow fans, if you can, stay after the game. It's not... You don't have to get trolleyed or anything. Come in, have a cup of tea, have a Coca-Cola. The fa- the players are there. The coaching staff are there. It's it's great catch-up. It really is. And And, you know, Gary... Didn't have to give his time. He gave us what well, we were chatting for him for about half an hour, weren't we, John? Yeah, I don't think yeah. he could get. He wanted to go. He, he well, we did have him in an arm lock, and you had I, him by his I, head. But <laughs> yeah, it was really nice, and you know, it's, what a club, you know, where you can stand in in there and you feel relaxed. And we had just a open chat with him, didn't we? And uh, it was it's in in 
interesting to get his insight on how things are going and yeah. what's what's important and valuable and and uh, yeah it's it's ni- nice you've got a group of players that feel you know happy to mix with with the fans in that way it's a real closeness i think and it it shows i think after every game the fans are there to um clapping them off the pitch every game win lose or draw mm. and the way they come over and show their appreciation at the end of the game as well is is something that brings fans and players together i think yeah right then. 100%. Right, let's look forward to Saturday. So it's Bowers and Pitsy, mm-hmm. and they're, I'm sorry to say it, they're bloody useless, right? They're in the bottom three. I think they're one in six. Okay, so I'm not putting a block on anything here, but I'm f- smelling three delicious points. <laughs> You've just um, put the on it then. <laughs> right, they can all blame me. I don't care. Do, do you see us playing the same side? Do you see um, Jamal staying up front, or do you think they're going to maybe bring put him to the bench? I, I think personally they're going to give him um, another shot. I reckon they'll um, put him on. I think he had a really good game yesterday. And um, I think it'll be, you know, sort of like silly, not especially after bringing him in. And the only way he's going to gel into the team is with time on the pitch. So I think they will keep him going. I think um, I personally would like to see him and Ben Pope up front together, see how they work together, because I had a lot of running. He was doing a lot of running so I think between him and Popey sort of going towards each other like they I reckon they would play really well together mm. well we've got options there haven't we we have got options so John what do you think um I don't know perhaps we saw it from a different angle I I think he, he looks like a player that's been out of first team action for a while and he needs time to get back in and settle in and see how he interlinks with the players around him. And you will find might find that there's a bit of chemistry that develops there. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's the same with Del Boy, isn't it? You know, he, need, he needs... some Sometimes a player needs a, a goal and then the confidence comes in and they have that self-belief back. Um, but, but then... You know, it's, that's going to come with with more games. You know, mm. more. I think Del Pinto. I meant. <laughs> yeah, we we knew. Well, I was I was for a second. I didn't know who you were on about, but yeah, no, no, Del. I mean, what do we think of Del Pinto? What, what did, do you think um, of him at the moment? It's, 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 what, is he just to find his place in the team? Is what I'm asking. Yeah, I think McKenzie, so. I think Mackenzie's. You know, he he got stuck in right from a couple of games in, and suddenly he was looking like, yeah, he's got that. <laughs> that confidence in himself and um and hopefully that will come with with Del Pinto um and and um Jamal. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Adam. Yeah, I I think yeah, I think um like uh, with Pinto, I think he just um I he's he's another one that I think will gel really well with the team, but I think that he just maybe needs a slightly different position on the pitch. Sometimes I think he he feels a bit lost in where he's playing. So I I don't know. I I I I can certainly see him being a very valuable asset to the team. I just think maybe he needs to try a different position, maybe um, more centralised. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I, if I would look at it, I would say Del Pinto stays on the wing. On the other wing, I would I would probably try and put. I'd maybe say, did you put TC there or do you put Chinadu there? I think Nori. Nori needs to come on as an impact sub these days. Um, I would say that Jamal c- goes to the bench and we p- put Ben Pope up front again, but I don't know. That maybe that's short term thinking. Yeah, I mean, I I still I still think that we Hastings would play better in a, a sort of four three three format. Mm. So four at the back, three midfield, three up front. That's the way. You're I just would the tinker man. You are. Yeah, you, you're, you're Claudio Ranieri. You are. Maybe, mm. Mm. but no, I do. I think that. If we could have sort of free up front, sort of like like proper sort of flat free rather than like diamond free or anything, I think we would, you know, have more options. Like especially going forward, because yeah, we do seem to hold the ball in midfield a lot and don't get it forward enough. Oh, you see, he's been in the main stand too long, John. <laughs> well, he's been I, in the main stand too I, long. Football has changed. You don't you don't have static um, strikers anymore. You, you know, you've got. You've got a lot of high work rate needed to win that midfield battle. If you stick people up front, then then you lose out the battle further back. It, 
you know, defence starts from the the front of the line as well, you know. So you see nowadays you've got that athleticism and people tapping back and doing positional work, even mm. got the ball. You know, you can have the the two tens system or you you know, and I and I think what what I'm I'm kind of comforted by is the more you listen to Meany and Alfic, you know they've they've got such high coaching pedigree yeah. that only them sometimes we look on and we'll we think oh why why this or why that but they're excellent coaching team there and they know all the the bit we don't know about players attitudes players form you know their strengths their weaknesses how that fits into the system that they they've spent ages trying to coach the whole team into mm. and and it, it's interesting for us. We all got opinions, and um, well, but, uh, as, but, you know, as Clint Eastwood said, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. <laughs> awesome. so, just to obviously let people know, I personally won't be doing the radio this weekend because I've got a prior engagement. But you will have a guest commentator on this week, the lovely Sue Gallup. Oh, excellent. Okay. Who is who is doing the commentary this week. So um, I'm meeting up with her on Friday um, before I head off for my engagement. But um, I'm, I'm meeting her up on Friday and sort of showing her how the setup works and everything like that. And uh, she will be your commentator. Whether she's going to have a co-commentator, I don't know. Maybe she'll have Pat again. Is, we, we is she going to moan about Charlton and Fleck? Um, oh, that's guaranteed. I, it's, it's guaranteed. <laughs> I mean... We will see, but um, yeah. So, um, so this this week, I mean, I'll be listening in most definitely. Um, but yeah, Sue oh, will great be doing, she's the doing it. Excellent. Yeah, good on Sue. Yeah, put, put a call to arms out, and then if anyone wants to join me for the Averley game, the away game at Averley, as a co-commentator, um, let me know. I'm I'm looking for someone else to come in. Um, obviously, I have two microphones, so we we can um, yeah, we can if someone Who wants can turn to, that down. Who can turn 90 minutes with Adam Carter down? My missus. <laughs> uh, on that note, on no that bad. note. Right. John, Adam, thank you very much. And I shall thank see you. you. Uh, well, well, I won't see you at the game. And I won't hear you at the game either. But, no, uh, no. You'll be there in spirit. I will be um, in the um, affluent voice of Sue Gallup. <laughs> so but uh no it's um, no no trolling sue no one message sue and start talking about charlton athletic because we don't want to well, set I'm her not, off she's not going to have the live chat open so oh she's not oh okay no because so, i would be tempted oh you know how's the charlton athletic doing just <laughs> start her off yeah no, I, I don't think charlton are playing which is why she's going to be at Hastings. Oh, but, and they sat they've sacked they've sacked the manager again i think um anyway chaps take care I, well, I shall see you at the game, uh, and I shall <laughs> see you and hear you at a game quite soon, Adam. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Yeah. See you, mate. Oh, that was that.